Uh, today we're going to learn how to wear a Japanese summer kimono or yukata. So the yukata is something that you would wear in the summertime to a fireworks festival or a summer festival or if you have one uh, you can wear it to any special occasion and today we're going to learn how to do that. So they're not that difficult to tie yourself. It might seem daunting because there's a lot of fabric here. So if, you, uh, if you're wearing a dark yukata, so this one is uh, dark in colour, the base of it is black, so what you want to do is make sure that your underwear is also dark. If your yukata is a lighter shade, then make sure you're either wearing white underwear or a skin tone underwear. To start off with, we're going to make sure that we fold our yukata the right way. So yes, there is a wrong way to do this. If you take the left hand side, so this is my left and your right if you're mirroring, if you take your left hand side and put it in and then take your right hand side and put it over, then that means that you've died. So don't fold it the wrong way. Make sure that you fold it with the right side in and then the left side over the top of the right. And that means that you're still living. To begin folding, what we need to do is first put the yukata on. So you're gonna make sure that you put your arm through the correct hole because there is another hole underneath here. So you want to make sure that your arm's going all the way through in a straight line. Next up, we want to make sure that once we've got the yukata on, that we have it in the right position. So with our yukata on, we're going to take a look at the back seam. So there is a seam that runs down the back of the yukata and we're going to line that up with the centre of our body. So if, we, if I stand with my legs apart, you can't really see it too well on the camera but you may be able to see that there is a seam that runs down the middle of that pattern. So we want to make sure that that is lined up with the centre of our back. And we are going to also line up the bottom of the yukata with our feet. So this is probably the most difficult bit. So we're going to stand with our feet together and if you're going to wear high heeled shoes on the day, make sure you put these on. So once we have put the right side under and then the left side over the top, we want it so that it's, your yukata is just gliding just off the floor. And as I said, if you're going to be wearing high-heeled shoes, take that into account. So make sure you put your high-heeled shoes on first before you then tie your yukata. So we're ready to do the first tie, okay? So we've got our feet level and we've got our yukata level at the bottom. We're going to hold it all together here and we're going to take one of our himo our ties and we're going to just tie the yukata in place. So yukata don't have any buttons or buttonholes or zips. Everything is held together with strips of fabric. So what we're going to do is tie the yukata in place. Now this one is the most important one. This is the one that will actually hold everything together. So you want to make sure that this tie is nice and snug and it isn't going anywhere. So don't be afraid to tie it really tightly. Uh, make sure as well, this is a little tip from me, make sure that if you are wearing underwear that you tie this tie above the uh, seam of your underwear. So if you're wearing, uh, say, some little shorts, make sure that the little shorts come below this line so that you can go to the loo. So another little tip from me, once you've tied your first hemo, I always get the loose strands of fabric and just tuck these in to that tight belt that you've made for yourself, just so that they're nicely out of the way. 
So we've made the first tie. Now what are we going to do with all this fabric? Here's another tip. Take your hands out of the sleeves. And remember that hole that I mentioned earlier? Hello. Bring your hands completely out of the sleeves. And we're going to use our hands inside the yukata to straighten all this fabric out. So what I mean by that is we're going to take our hands and just push the fabric down and it's actually going to cover up this tie, this belt that we've made. So if I turn to the back, we're going to use our hands to smooth out that fabric so that we're creating a smooth line and hiding that tie. Once you've sorted out the fabric so that it's covering up your himo, what we're going to do next is we're going to just turn around and make sure that the back collar is not right up against our neck. So what we want to do is just pull it away from our neck a little and just let it hang down. So usually when you wear your cutter you'd have your hair up and then this would hang down a little to show off your beautiful neck. So once you've positioned that in the right place, what you're going to do next is sort out the front. So we're going to make sure the right comes over and the left on top of the right. And then we're ready for our second tie. So the second place we're going to tie the himo is around the center, uh, about sort of halfway down your rib cage. So this is the second thing that's going to hold everything in place. Once you've tied your humo at the top, you want to just double check and make sure that all of the fabric at the back is all lined up nice and straight and then you're ready to put your obi on. Now um, how much, how close you have this at the top here, so how uh, closed you have this really is up to you. If it's a formal setting you might want to keep this more closed but definitely remember to have the back collar out a bit more. So we're ready for the obi. Today I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use a cheaty obi <laughs> which basically the bow has already been tied. So these come with a bow that's already made up and you just slot the bow into the back of your obi and the obi is uh, the normal thickness and look of an obi but it has ties on it so you can tie it. So this is a really quick easy way of putting an obi on. So we're going to put the obi on and make sure our ties are out and at the top and wrap the cheating obi around us and when we get to the point where they meet we're just going to tie these securely together. So we've tied the obi around and then they'll just be the two pieces of string if you just tie them in a bow and then what you're going to do is just tuck them in so that they're not on show. And then this sort of line at the front, we don't need to worry about this too much because what we're going to do is we're going to use the cheating bow to cover that up. So to cover this up, we're going to take the bow and we're just going to take this strange contraption here and just slot it into the obi. And then to stop it from falling off, we take the string and we tie it around ourselves. However, I'm not going to do that just yet. Because if I was to do that, I'm going to need to move this around to the back. Because you cannot have your bow at the front. If you leave your bow at the front of your yukata, then that means that you're basically a Japanese prostitute. So we're not going to do that. 
So we're going to move the obi around to the back and the way that you do that is just to take it in your hands and move it around to the, because we have the left over, we're going to move it around to the right side. So now we have the bow on the back. We can take the string for the bow and just tie it around our front and this is going to stop this from falling out even if someone decides to come along and uh, tug on your bow, you have it secured at the front here. So you just tie this into a bow and then hide those strings in your obi. Now throughout the day, you might find that uh, this gets a little bit loose uh, just so long as you've got that first tie nice and secure, that's the one that you really need to worry about. We're going to learn how to tie an obi for your yukata. So I have spoken before about using the chiti obi or the cheating version where the bow is already tied for you. But if you don't have one of those and you just have the fabric, then we're going to learn how to tie that. So you want to start by putting some of the fabric over your shoulder and then you're going to wrap it around yourself once and then you're going to use this to tighten it up and then you're going to wrap it around another time to the front. So around the back it goes and then comes out the other end and again pull it nice and tight. So I'm just going to tuck this for ease in here you can, if you want, put your head on it, but that could give you a pain in the neck. So I'm just going to pop it in here for now so I can keep it safe. So once you've brought your obi round to the front, what you're going to do is begin to create the bow. Now, how you make the bow is you find the end of the obi, and you're going to measure it along the breadth of your shoulders. So you're going to take the end of the obi to one shoulder, and then measure it to the other shoulder and that should be the thickness of your bow. So then begin folding. So you're going to fold that obi down and then again and again and depending how much fabric you have will depend how many times you fold it. So continue to fold your obi until you run out of fabric and then you want to bring that across to the front and hold it in front. So now we're going to take the two sort of sides of the obi and just squash our bow in. So this is beginning to create the look of the bow. Now this is where it gets all complicated. So we're going to hold it and then we're going to take that piece from earlier whoop, and we're going to fold this one, again, holding this, so this takes skills, so do give it a bit of a practice before you actually try and do this on the day. You're going to fold this one, and if need be, fold it again. Da, 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 da. So we have a bit more of a thinner, narrow piece to work with. And we're going to bring this narrow piece over the top of our bow. So that's going to go over the top and then wrapping around and underneath and that will begin to secure the bow. Pulling it tight and going round again and then whatever you've got left will need to be tucked in. Once you've done that you can start adjusting your bow. Now if it starts to look beautiful on one side but messy on the other that's when you need to just let it go and try again. So you're going to keep going until you've got a nice neat bow and it may be that you just need to move your obi around to the side a little bit more and tighten it up a bit more. So now that we've made the bow from the obi we're going to make sure that we don't leave it in the front 
Because if you leave it in the front, then that means that you're a courtesan or a Japanese prostitute. <laughs> and they would leave the bows at the front so that they could very quickly take them off and put them back on again. So we're going to move our bow around to the back. So you just grab hold of the bow and the obi and just slide it around to the back. Now once you've got it at the centre of the back, because we're not using a cheating obi, we're using a traditional obi, you'll probably find that you can see some crinkly lumps at the front of your obi from your himo. So from the ties that you use to tie your yukata. So one trick is to use an obi board. So this isn't mandatory, but it's a great way to cover up this kind of strange bobbly line. So you take the obi board and just slide it. You should have two pieces of obi fabric here. If not, it doesn't matter. You can just put it underneath. But to stop it from moving, you just slide the obi board in between those two pieces of fabric. And then once you've got it in, it should cover up those lumps. So once it's in position, there's no weird bumpy lumps. <laughs>